Welcome everybody to everybody to on podcast, the Microsoft podcast where we talk about Microsoft stuff on a podcast. I'm your co-host today, Graham Anderson, and I'm joined by the world's greatest co-host, Arif Bacchus. Yeah, and we're here for another lovely session of Windows News. This is week three of Satya Nadella <laughs> not coming on the podcast. We are waiting for you to show your presence or make your presence known. Our fans are waiting. We have tons of ideas, stuff to talk about Windows and Xbox, uh, and until you do, this countdown will keep going. Uh, with that being said, let's get into our news lineup for today. What do we got? We got Surface rumors. We're heading into April now, and there are some Surface rumors floating around out there, one of which is about the Surface Laptop Go 2 possibly coming soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We also will have uh, news about Windows Spotlight wallpapers options uh, in Windows Insider Builds and the change to Media Player. Uh, I think they just added some uh, new features for that. And then we also have some news about the HoloLens 2 because it's not dead yet because Microsoft just uh, updated Windows Holographic to version 22, 22H1. They should start calling these like different, uh, they should like name them after different zombie movies. It's not <laughs> technically know. dead, but it, uh, it's pretty much dead. I think if uh, I had a dollar for every time I said that on this podcast for the last <laughs> year, I'd probably have a billion dollars and enough <laughs> to buy another studio, by, uh, Xbox studio by now. Either that or at least start your own Windows holographic. <laughs> uh, we also have our Faz Recap, which is one of our favorite sections because it challenges us to get through a ton of news in less than 10 minutes. Uh, starting that section, we'll be talking about uh, my, uh, Windows Insiders being able to uh, install third-party widgets, which might take the entire 10 minutes to talk about because we've all been waiting for that. And we have some news about disabling those annoying app icons in your system tray that might bother you if you like keeping your system tray clean. Yeah, we got some news about uh, certain affinity as a studio, uh, deepening its re- relationship with Halo, and uh, not any more additional news, but uh, some stuff about uh, their own uh, Xbox exclusives as well. And then there's also some additional news about the Windows 11 default browser situation, which we've covered heavily the past few weeks. But now everyone has got that update that lets you switch your default browser easily with one click. Yeah, and then we'll be jumping back to Xbox. Uh, we have uh, rumors and reports about Microsoft working on uh, furthering their custom chips for the uh, next version of Xbox. We don't know if we'll be getting new hardware, but we may be getting uh, a custom chip that could do a little bit more than what the chips do now. And then after Fast Recap, there's Week Ahead, and it's going to be a big week ahead for someone because we're doing a giveaway. Yeah, we mentioned last week that we had a giveaway. We have had it going on our website uh, for this whole week. I apologize because I've been doing tons of follow-up uh, Twitter uh, announcements about it, but uh, we it'll be going on for another week, so uh, stay tuned to Twitter, stay tuned to our website to see um, on ways that you can enter to win. And there's also some news about Microsoft possibly phasing antitrust charges again. Yeah, uh, we had a story coming out about that, and we'll be going over just the ins and outs of that and keeping an eye on it because it, uh, it's developing rather quickly, actually. And we love talking about Edge, but there's another web browser that just came out on Mac OS that uh, we want to talk about as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we want to, but we will talk <laughs> about it. Uh, with that being said, let's get to the top of our list of news today. So first topic is the Surface Laptop Go 2 rumors. And it's been nearly two years since it launched. I think it was towards the middle of middle or ending of 2021 or yeah, 2021 that the Surface Laptop Go launched. And according to Windows Central Zach Bowden, we're finally getting a follow-up and it is codenamed Zuma and it could come towards the first half of this year. Now, he didn't say when, but he did mention that Z- June would be a possibility and that the pricing would stay the same and the specs would stay the same and the design would stay the same. And it's just basically going to be a new sta- Sage color option and getting spec bumps with the 11 generation Intel Core processors inside. Yeah, it's interesting to kind of note that we had the Windows SC, was it? Was it that CE or the laptop that came out that you tested yeah. out? The, Windows 11, the Win- Surface Laptop SE. Surface Laptop SE that came out. And then this will be kind of competing with that. It's interesting uh, to note that I think that they are making, uh, like, you know, Apple has their various MacBooks and they have their levels. It, you know, it seems like all of the levels started like, high school and above. Uh, it seems that Microsoft's kind of scaling that a little bit further down, having uh, elementary school and using the, I would assume the Surface Laptop Go 
as your entry middle school through basically high school device. I mean, I, uh, I tested one out, played with one. It's a, it's a fine device. It's not a Surface laptop. It's not a Surface Pro, uh, but it does have its uses. Uh, you know, it's a different type of build quality, but still very, you know, well, very well built, you know, kind of does carry the Surface name. So it'll be interesting to see them kind of go with this again. As we always know, Microsoft kind of nails it on their third try. So uh, I wouldn't say rush out and try and get this one if it does happen, <laughs> but just keep an eye on it if, if they continue this line down, uh, this device down the road. I reviewed the first uh, Surface Laptop Go for another publication, and one thing that really bothered me about it was the fact that it doesn't have a backlit keyboard. So I hope that the second generation has that, but I doubt that they'll include it because, because La- Laptop Go is budget, and if you think about kids don't, kids don't do homework at night. Come on. <laughs> you <laughs> know, you 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 night. have girls, so you you know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in bed long before the sun goes down. So you know, maybe that's maybe that's where they're coming from. What if they're watching TikTok videos before bed? They'll need, that's need that backlit. That's not what this device is for. <laughs> uh, but I do that's hope it's some, duo for. I do hope it's something that they'll add, but I doubt that it's something that we're gonna see because it's one of those budget cutting, cost cutting measures that usually laptop makers put when they're trying to save you money at the final price. Well, I mean, they already cut some stuff on the screen and the. Uh... I believe the power button that does double as a fingerprint scanner yeah, does yeah. light up itself. So, I mean, there's capacity to do that. But yeah. as you said, it is a cost-saving cost saving measure uh, people add into the equation of building devices. Uh, that's it. Time for the second topic, which is Windows Spotlight getting Windows Spotlight wallpaper coming to Windows Insiders and also some changes for the media player on the dev channel. Yeah, I'll get into the wallpapers. For those of you who maybe they just get tired of seeing people with that Windows logo. <laughs> and realizing that people were never changing their backgrounds. Yeah. They're like, you know, right. we'll change it for you. Uh, so what it basically does is they're implementing an out-of-the-box experience where some devices, uh, when they, you know, uh, do an iOS uh, ISO build and kind of start off with the new thing, they're testing it out to see if people will like just having their wallpaper changed automatically. And for those, for the rest of us, it'll become uh, an ingrained feature in the settings if the testing goes well for this. It's something that I really like because uh, I, I, I'm like you said, I'm getting tired of that Bloom wallpaper and <laughs> having a new refresh each day of a different wallpaper on your desktop. It looks so cool because with the way Windows 11 works, it also changes your accent color each day with the with the way that the because it fits with the wallpaper. So it looks pretty sweet and it's pretty easy to use. You just click a little uh, button at the top and you could cycle between them and find out more about the image itself. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because, uh, you know, if it's one thing that we talk about constantly on this show, it's that Windows insiders hate change. So <laughs> I don't know if changing their accent color every day and uh, changing their wallpaper every day is going to work for some people. I do remember a tweet earlier this week when this uh, first came out that Richard Hay, who I guess we've had on the show, mentioned that he wasn't a fan of it because sometimes the, the backgrounds can be, uh, you know, somewhat yeah. uh, cluttered. Uh, and it's just because of the image they choose. Sometimes they shoot stuff around locations that might have tons of buildings or colors, super bright things like that. And for some people who, uh, you know, confetti their entire background full of files and docs and stuff like that, it may be hard to find or read those things. So it could be jarring for some people. Uh, I keep a very clean background. Uh, I did try it out uh, when I use the app or whatever. And I found it very fun and useful because in addition to changing wallpaper, there's additional information for each wallpaper that you can click into. So if you see a location or you see an image that you like, you can find out about the photographer, where it was taken, um, you know, additional things like that. And it just kind of starts a whole search. And it also ties into Microsoft Rewards because when you start searching that kind of stuff, you get points and rewards and benefits for stuff like that. So it's just a, a whole dog fooding cycle. So uh, again, be on the lookout for, the, for that uh, for you insiders. Uh, again, they're testing it out. They're going to get feedback. We'll see what they eventually end up doing. They may drop the whole thing all together. That is for both dev and beta channel insiders in build 22598. But if you're a dev channel insider, you just got a special update in this build. And it is for the media player. And the media player, it's uh, getting bumped to version 11.2203. Point three zero point zero, and what it does is it can, lets. Can you, you say that five times? <laughs> yeah, probably can't. It doesn't roll off the tongue very sweet, but at least 
I, I'm just telling you the numbers because I know some people like to go in the app and check for the number, but that's the version number that you'll eventually get uh, when you install the new dev channel build. And it comes with a couple of tweaks for the media player. You're going to be able to switch between two different views on the artist page when browsing your collection. One view will show you all the albums in a grid and the other shows all the songs grouped by album. And then other, other new features include quick actions to albums, artists, videos, and playlists when you have over, hover over them for a quick selection and playback. Microsoft is also working to improve the performance of Media Player for those with large music libraries as well. So there you go. That's just a quick wrap of what's new in the Windows 11 Media Player for Dev Channel Insiders. Where was all of this when I used to, when I, when I was, before I was streaming, when I had my laptop to capacity with music and I needed all that organization. Now that I use <laughs> streaming, it, it seems like all for naught. <laughs> uh, too little, too late for some people, I guess. Speaking of too little, too late, we have our Windows holographic version 22H1 as our next, uh, our, our last of the uh, big three news stories, uh, getting an update. So uh, Windows holographic, as you mentioned earlier at the top, is not dead. It is uh, alive and well and getting new updates. And I think uh, we'll be able to quote from uh, the blog itself, talking about what was updated. Uh, I believe they're saying moving platform mode settings to toggle moving platform mode and more via settings uh, for the end user. Uh, they're moving the platform mode, the MDM policies, uh, which they're configuring new MPM settings via the MDM IT admins. And uh, they're moving the SDKs, configure, uh, configures MPM via apps for developers. So those are some of the th top three things that came with this Windows holographic update. I don't know anybody who's still using Windows holographic <laughs> updates, but I also am not a doctor. I'm not in IT. I'm not, you know, in a warehouse. I'm not in any of these professions that uh, would still make use of this. I follow a guy on TikTok. It showed up in my For You page who happened to buy a, a HoloLens 2 headset at full price, and he's using it. And I'm really surprised at how many people don't know what HoloLens 2 is. Like, they're asking him in the comments, what is that? How do you do that? What is this feature? You could do that with your start menu. And so it's actually, uh, it's not a mainstream product, but when when Microsoft releases these kinds of updates, it makes you think, like, what would happen if it was a mainstream product? Would more people be wearing it? And what, what would mainstream people be able to do with such a headset? Because he actually wore this thing while he was sitting in a lecture at his college and he had a Bluetooth keyboard and he was watching videos and taking notes and everyone was looking at him like he's so weird. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not even yeah. Google. Yeah. People looking at people with Google Glasses is weird and that was like a third the size of uh, what they get for HoloLens. Uh, going, going over some more specifics, uh, I think they said there were updates to the start gestures yeah. uh, settings. So uh, there are now, uh, there are new solutions now for those want to keep the start menu from appearing while doing tasks that involve looking downwards and actually using their hands. So you can start, like, you can put it somewhere and kind of leave it where it's at and it'll, you know, have its marker in, I guess, the uh, digital landmark out there. Power and thermal SDKs for apps. Uh, now people can try out this uh, new feature uh, when, it gets, uh, when, it's, when it gets hotter in temperature. If you're in a warm environment and are pushing your apps to the limits, uh, that you've built with your own apps. You can include the SDK to include notification events and have custom actions. So uh, people can kind of be aware of their surroundings and kind of get the heads up like, hey, you know, it's pretty warm up. Maybe you want to start doing something else with your hollow lens instead of what you're currently doing, which is burning heat. Uh, this colorblind mode, uh, I think that kind of speaks for itself, but uh, it's a feature in the hollow lens making it more accessible uh, using new color filters that can help make things easier to view for people who are colorblind. Uh, depends on which type of, uh, there's also variations of colorblind. So I don't know if they, cover like you know red green or, or blue yellow kind of things like that and there's also single app kiosk policy for launching other apps a new mixed reality policy that allows you to launch specific apps from a single app kiosk app uh, this is useful if you want to use a specific app but might need access to settings to change wi-fi or edge to perform a sign-in so uh, those are those and there's also a list of fixes and improvements you can find and find these on the blog post we have a write-up about it so visit our site uh, maybe we'll drop it somewhere in the, in the notes as well but again, there's a full detail list on that. Uh, th as of right now, there's no news about Holland's 3, um, at least not hardware-wise. 
There's also no big uh, new features uh, as far as consumers are concerned. And as you mentioned, and, you know, this guy on your TikTok is making use of it. And it doesn't seem like this is a big push for marketing behind it. Like, again, I understand if you're not going to be doing a new piece of hardware, but at least say like, hey, along with Windows 11, there's Windows Holographic and it's doing mm -hmm. amazing things. So go out and run out and grab one and try it out. We're not seeing that right now. So who knows what Alex Kipman's over there doing? Maybe he's uh, talking to marketing right now. They're going to come up with the whole pitch for November. And that said, all of our main, we hit all of our main topics. So now it's time for a fast recap. And the first topic in fast recap, 10 minutes on the clock, is Windows 11 users being able to install third-party widgets from the Microsoft Store soon. There's something that hinted that this could be finally be a possibility. Yeah, and here goes our entire 10 minutes. <laughs> so for those of us who have been complaining about the, uh, I guess, the widgets page, the, the news and weather uh, slide out thing that comes with every install of Windows 11. Um, they are now hinting at, and I believe uh, it's a widget manifest update uh, that's buried within the code of this newest update that hints at the ability to install uh, apps into that. Uh, so users will have a limited selection of new apps that they might be able to put in there that are customized to fit that entire area and look nice and fit within the UI itself. Now, we'd mentioned this, I think, um, I want to say two months ago as well, where Microsoft also uh, started kind of hinting at uh, the restrictions that would be needed in order to put uh, an, uh, an app in there. So again, this wouldn't be uh, just a version of it, a skin of an app that you drop into here. They, you would need to develop spe specifically to meet the re requirements to fit in here, size-wise, image rotation, uh, the size of the the actual uh, file size of the app itself, things like that. So it seems like we're heading towards that direction. I'm looking forward to it. And second topic, you didn't spend ten minutes on that, so I'm I glad. That... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Second topic is also related to Windows 11 and Windows Insiders, and it's being able to to uh, disable all of your app icons in your system tray. Now, it's kind of confusing. Me and you were talking about it, and we are like, why? But, you know, <laughs> if you have Teams open, Skype open, or you have a USB drive attached to your computer, you'll see those little icons next to your clock for them. And usually that's where you go to quit an app or eject a drive or whatever. In the latest dev channel build, there's a new option in the system settings that called the hidden icon menu. And if you go there, you're able to hide, basically hide all of the icons and turn off that overflow area and have a clean taskbar with no icons to bother you. Yeah, it makes it even more and more like macOS by the day. Uh, we also have news about <laughs> Certain Affinity, which is a developer that's been working with Microsoft for the past 15 years, deepening in relationships with Halo. Uh, they didn't specifically say exactly what they're going to be doing, but there's been hints and rumors that they're working on a project to help bring a Fortnite-esque Battle Royale uh, gameplay to uh, Halo. And I think a lot of Halo Infinite players have kind of been requesting aspects of this uh, since uh, multiplayer has been out for a while. So we're going to keep an eye on that. They're also working on two, I believe, uh, exclusives for Xbox under a project, I forget the name, of, uh, code name, uh, I forget the name of it as, as right now, kind of slips my mind, but we'll keep an eye on that as well. We know that uh, Microsoft will be probably announcing some uh, game related information uh, towards June, which would have been E3, but since E3 is no longer around, they'll probably have their own event for that. And next up is Windows 11 users being easily able to switch default browsers. Now, the last month, there was an optional Windows 11 update that you could have installed, and it would have give you that little uh, that little area in the system settings where you could change your default browser with one click. It was just an optional update, so not everyone had it and not everyone installed it. But now the April Patch Tuesday update, which was released uh, two or three days ago, that introduces the ability to switch your default Default browser with just one click, but the controversial file associations thing where some PDFs and some other file extensions are still left over to Edge, that's still there and that didn't change. But now you'll be able to switch your default browser in just one click on Windows 11. Yay! <laughs> and last but not least, we'll be talking about Microsoft working on a smaller, more efficient chip for the Xbox Series X. Uh, as we kind of hinted towards at the beginning of this, we're not planning to see uh, a re- uh, invent of the console itself. We're probably not going to get a slimmer Xbox or anything anytime soon just because we're still sort of in the lull of a component shortage. So uh, I do believe uh, with this news, I, I think our, our own writer 
referenced Brad Sams as kind of his source on this, and even Brad had slight on details on this specifically. But I think what we're looking at is just the deepening of uh, AMD and Microsoft working together on these specific chips for here. Uh, I think they're going to be trying to squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. Uh, they're probably going to be looking at for ways to take their old Xbox Series X servers and, and start building up that uh, library of uh, blades that they need in order to run uh, Xbox um, or X Cloud and things like that. Yeah. So they're probably looking to refresh that and put these new chips into new devices. Again, we don't know very much about the chip as of right now, but we suspect that's what's going to be happening and maybe we'll get a refresh for the xbox series x with this new chip as well and i just want to tag this on uh this other story on here at the end uh of the fast recap because we still have some extra time but microsoft is looking for an ad program where you could see ads in free-to-play xbox games so basically say you're driving in a racing game and you look up at a billboard you could see an ad from a certain company and microsoft uh, would come up with a program where companies would be able to put spots there that's is according to business insider so it's something to keep an eye out heading into the future and it could come at the third quarter of this year yeah i'm gonna tag on some more information to this to the week ahead just so we can get out of our 10 minute quota so see you in the next segment for some more information about that. <laughs> and in week ahead uh, you you mentioned it uh time to get over to our giveaway and talk about what the people could win in the week ahead because we talked about it last week and now we'll finally select the winner uh no we, we still got another week so we want to give people time so if you missed our podcast last week uh, or you're doing things uh, for, you know, um, Easter or you celebrate the, the holiday this weekend. You still have time. You have next week to kind of go on and, and either uh, subscribe to the podcast uh, on your different podcaster apps. We specifically would like you to do it on YouTube just because we were able to track the numbers a little better that way. Or you can subscribe to us on Twitter as well or leave a comment in uh, any of the posts or sections that we have. Uh, you know, saying anything you want to. It doesn't have to be about gaming. But if you do you have a chance to win the Legion uh, 5i gaming tower with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660. Uh, it's a pre-built system. Um, I did a review on it, so there it is right there in the background. It's all boxed up, ready to welcome itself to a new home for somebody, it's maybe one of you lucky folks. Uh, it's a decent system. It's not you know, super great um, because it only has eight gigs of RAM to start off with. So if you have RAM sitting at home, uh, it does have double dual slots in there, uh, so you can stack on some more RAM. You can probably get up to, I don't know, 64 gigabytes in there and get yourself a really decent system. Starts off with a solid uh, gaming uh, GPU. Uh, again, it could be better. Uh, the fans are in there are pretty amazing, so you do not have to worry about cooling for, for whatever else you add into there. The cable management's a bit confusing and troublesome if you have a certain breakdown on how you kind of get to stuff because they hide cables everywhere. But if you have time to fix it up, uh, I think it's a great starter system, uh, again, you're getting it for free. Everybody else could probably go get it from Best Buy for about a thousand bucks. So <laughs> think about it. Free system, free gaming. You know, enter enter to win. And that's one thing to look for for on on Microsoft at the week ahead. But in terms of news, we're also keeping an eye on this Microsoft antitrust charges thing. Yeah. Okay. They haven't officially been charged with anything. Uh, just to get that out there. Uh, and what it's looking like, though, is that because of the way that cloud contract that they did back in 2019, I think we wrote about it, we had several pieces about the weird way that they were scaling up the pricing for things on Azure, things on Windows, things for Windows Server, things like that. They just raised the price on everything. It's now coming out, uh, you know, as customers are kind of getting their uh, or renewing their contracts or kind of going through the details. The reason why they may have raised the price on that is so they can offer steeper discounts for people who use unilaterally Microsoft uh, services. So if you have, you know, you get a subscription for Office 365, it goes up in price, but if you paired with Azure, you get a steep discount. Well, that's sort of tying the line uh, of antitrust and specifically, I think the term that uh, the FTC uses is tying as well, which is where you bundle something to basically keep down the competition. I wrote a piece on it. It goes through uh, exactly what uh, some of users have been saying, uh, third party resellers, from even, even from Microsoft, people who dedicate their entire business to selling more Microsoft products are saying that Microsoft is heading down this road. And uh, it was a Bloomberg piece that was very informative that I you know, derived um, our conclusion from. Uh, there's also information about, uh, I believe, uh, Brad Smith, uh, who is the who is the Microsoft president, uh, who came out and is acknowledging this too. So this is 
you know, where you, you know, the, the story kind of takes a bit, a bit of a turn. Most of the time, Microsoft's accused of antitrust, it brushes it off saying, hey, this isn't the early 2000s, get off our back, we're a different company. But Brad, Sam's, uh, Brad Smith has come out and said that there are valid concerns about what they're doing, and he's going to work with companies and, and consumer, uh, customers to address that. So I think that even they're starting to realize that their 2019 stance on raising the prices uh, could in them in them in a world of hurt, uh, especially uh, in Europe, where they are prone to kind of slap Microsoft's wrist all the time. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And also something to keep an eye on is DuckDuckGo because they launched a <laughs> privacy-focused browser on Mac. I know we always talk about Edge and how it's great for privacy and how you could do so many great things at Edge, but DuckDuckGo also wants to enter that space in the week ahead on when in the weeks ahead on Windows. They launched it on Mac, a new web browser, and it has all of the features that you would expect from DuckDuckGo, like a fire button as well as the uh a button that may make sure that you're always using HTTPS and email protection, ad blocking, uh, a list that will show you all of your different trackers. It's a whole bunch of awesome stuff that they put together in this new Mac browser, and it's based off of the Safari engine. So I'm wondering if when they launch their new browser on Windows, will it use the Edge engine or will it stick to Chromium? Because it doesn't seem like they like Chromium, don't they? And it, so. it, they, they mentioned that they want to use the native rendering engine for their operating system. So that's why they're using Safari. Uh, web, I think it's called WebKit OS or Safari yeah, OS WebKit, or whatever, yeah, right. whatever it is on, on Mac OS. So that's why I'm wondering, will they go back and use Edge HTML, which is still alive, but not officially dead yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. it, I mean, I hope not, because that introduces another layer of complication that Microsoft doesn't seem to be able to nimbly work around anyway. I think when they get, you know, when they can align everything and get all their ducks in a row under one thing like Chromium, they're better off just doing that and kind of, you know, leaving edge because because when it comes to you know development and updates, that's remember that's where we start to have issues where they're trying to like, right. oh, we updated this one thing with features, but not this one thing, or you know, and then, you know, it just becomes an issue. So if they can just do Chromium, let's hope they can stay uh, focused on that. I wanted to get back to your last story because I believe it's last of our week yep. stuff. Uh, about the Microsoft Edge program. And you know, you and I were talking off camera about this, about how this is one way that Microsoft can keep developers uh, satiated and happy while they expand uh, their, ex, uh, their Game Pass. This is another way that developers who buy into Game Pass can make additional revenue on the side if they buy into this platform. Because as I think you mentioned, the revenue from this doesn't go to Microsoft. It goes, I think it's straight to the developer, right? It isn't yep, even that's the rumor, yep. So if Microsoft isn't taking any money out of this and you have a game like Cyberpunk, which has billboards up the wazoo everywhere, you can make <laughs> yourself a pretty penny uh, by doing this. And the same thing for Forza. I mean, you know, Microsoft didn't necessarily make its money off of its own studios, but if you're creating an open world game like Grand Theft Auto 6, maybe 10 years from now, whenever they get around <laughs> to it, it's another way to make money, especially if you have, uh, if you can get bigger names to, to buy, kind of buy into the game. Imagine seeing an actual Coke ad like Coca-Cola, not drug, Coca-Cola Coca ad <laughs> in Grand Theft Auto. Or, you know, if you have a product like Dell can get themselves an ad in Grand Theft Auto, imagine the sales on that. So I think it's great if this works out, especially if it's free-to-play games. If it's only free-to-play games, you know, it's, it's a good way to stay afloat because there are a lot of good free-to-play games uh, that, you know, never see beyond the light of day because they didn't have the money to keep the studios going or keep the developers happy. Uh, but if they can get them into you know regular paid games, I know people are going to say I pay and I don't want to see ads. But imagine if it's an ad you like, it could be interesting. And all that said, I think we hit everything we wanted to get to today. I believe so. And we want to thank everybody for sticking with us. And if you're watching this on Easter Sunday or the holiday that you're celebrating this weekend, uh, again, we want to give you a double thanks and appreciation for hanging out with us. Uh, you can find me at Mindhead1 on Twitter. Where can people find you? A back journ. Yeah, and if you want more stories or you want features or if you want to enter our giveaway for that beast over there, uh, you can follow us on, on Microsoft, uh, the handle on Twitter. Uh, you can go to our website on Microsoft.com, uh, enter both there and there, or you can just hang out here at YouTube and you know watch all of our old episodes. We are on episode 69, so I mean, that's 69 in the bank right there, so go back <laughs> and watch our old potato cam stuff if you have the time. Yeah, back when we smudged like Vaseline all of our webcams uh, and we were using microphones from the year 1992. Yeah.
And I had a few less gray hairs. So, yeah, go back. <laughs> it's a whole time machine there for you. See, being a Microsoft reporter is very stressful, right? Very stressful. <laughs> and you get, to, you get to see us start at the beginning of the pandemic where, you know, we're trying to shoot in corners and closets and stuff. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Yeah, thank you very much. And we'll hope to see you guys again next weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.